Good afternoon. Welcome to my channel. More specifically, welcome to my very first video on this channel. I am honored that you are here with me. So today, we'll be going over the basics of field recording. Now, what is field recording? Field recording is pretty much recording sound anywhere other than a dedicated studio. So we're indeed not in a field, but we're still field recording, and that's the goal. So we'll go over gear, we'll go over techniques, and the basics of field recording so far in my experience. Um, gear first. I could spend probably hours talking about gear. I'm not going to lie. I'm a gearhead. I like researching gear. I like gear. It's cool. It allows us to do new things and be creative and all that. But it costs money. <laughs> so this video will actually be mostly a, a, a budget friendly approach to field recording. Um, I recently graduated college, um, you know, working here and there, but I don't have the cash to drop 10 grand on a field recording setup. This whole setup um, can easily be done with a couple pieces of gear, really, to get started. You only, you only really need one piece of gear to get started. So let me show you that. Now my advice, it's down here, my advice, not only with field recording, but any sort of creative technical pursuit, whether it's photography, art, uh, music, carpentry, anything like that, my advice and, and plenty of other people's advice as well, start simple, start simple, do not go out and buy $10,000 worth of gear just to realize that, eh, it's not really my thing. So, starting simple in mind, I highly, highly recommend starting off with a simple two-track recorder such as this Tascam DR40X. This one has two built-in mics. It has two XLR ports if you wanted to use external mics. Now for probably the first year or so when I was doing field recording, I was just using this thing. I didn't have any external mics. I was just using boom, boom, built into this recorder. Um, so I'll switch to that now. Actually, the audio will switch over now. And now you're hearing audio coming from the Tascam DR40X 4-track recorder. So with any microphone outside, one of the big things you're going to need to consider is wind noise isolation. It's quite calm in the forest right now. There's not really any wind, but a very gentle breeze like so. not listening to it. Very gentle breeze like that. Even... completely destroys the audio. So you're going to want to pick up yourself one of these little windshields, windscreens. Um, I can't remember the exact model of this one, but they may, they have them online with the accessories for recorders like this. Um, the Zoom H4n looks similar to this, um, and it's like the, it's the standard one. You might have seen it before. A windscreen for the Zoom will fit on something like this. So I'll show you the difference when I put the wind protection on. A 
little better. Yeah, a little wind will get through, but it's not completely... My voice isn't... The, the wind coming from my voice is not blowing out these mics anymore. I can move it around. Pretty good. So I'm just spreading the mics out here. You can actually adjust the positioning of the mics on this. I had them in the XY configuration. Now they're in a, B configuration. We can go over mic techniques in a different video. Um, but for now, I'm going to set this up, and you can take a listen to the internal mics of the Tascam DR40X recorder. It sounds pretty nice. With that, we're going to switch back to my main recorder. Okay, hello, welcome back. So the recording I'm using for most of this video is uh, Zoom F8N Pro. Um, it's in its bag looks roughly like this it's this thing right in here it has eight separate inputs um, once you start getting into more inputs on recorders the price starts going up I purchased this for location sound production sound on film standing there at the boom pole people have wireless microphones so you kind of need more inputs Field recording, you only really need two, but I like the quality of this Zoom recorder a little bit better. And I'm running five mics right now, so we need more than two inputs that the Tascam has. So, once you decide that you want to upgrade to a rig with external microphones, which, I, again, I highly suggest starting with a little handheld recorder... Zoom has, I think the H1N is, uh, that's their most entry level one. Super cheap, super portable. See if you like field recording first. Because even something like this, right, you think, okay, I'll get a, a, a cheap little two track recorder and I'll get me some, some external mics and run. But once you get a decent pair of external mics, boom, 200 bucks. You need a little a, a mic stand. You need um, XLR cables, you're looking at stereo bars, yada yada. If you're not really sure that sound is your thing, start with a handheld recorder. It's so much easier, it takes up a lot less space, you don't got to deal with cables and stands and bars. But when you are ready, or let's say you do sound already, you got some mics, you want to get out there in the field. So let's talk about mics. The one I'm holding is a shotgun microphone. Um, people don't really use these for field recording. I'm using it to talk into because it helps isolate the voice from the other atmospheric sounds. If I turn down these microphones here, now you're only hearing the shotgun mic. And you can tell compared to the mics that I set up for field recording... which I just turned up, this, this microphone does a great job of isolation. So here, I'll point it at the traffic. I'll point it away and listen to the traffic noise disappear.
this is a shotgun mic. Most people, again, most people don't use it for field recording. I suppose if you're recording specific bird calls or insects or something, you could really narrow in and isolate sounds. But I'm more talking about um, ambient field recording techniques, spatial kind of stuff. So, again, we'll talk about mics in a different video in depth. Um, so... Let's start off with omnidirectional mics. Personally, these are my favorite mics for field recording. If you look at this little stand setup I have here, I have two different arrays. This stereo bar right here with these two little puffball looking things are omnidirectional microphones. They're only about that big. They have their little mounts. And omnidirectional mics pick up sound from all sides. So I'm going to turn down this shotgun mic, and I'm going to turn up the omnidirectional mics, and I'll give you a chance to take a listen. Especially pay attention to the lower frequencies. Omnidirectional mics do a great job of preserving the low frequencies from sound, even if they're really far away. So take a listen. These mics are extremely sensitive, so even my feet moving on the ground, you can hear that. My fingers, you can hear that. Enjoy the ambiance. Really, really quite a lovely sound from these mics. I'm going to turn them back down. The next set of microphones that I have up here are a pair of cardioid condenser, small diaphragm condenser microphones. Now, these mics are from Behringer. They're super super budget I think I got both of them for a hundred bucks they're not great for very quiet settings such as nighttime recordings um, they have uh, more self noise than more expensive mics go but again you get what you pay for I think they're actually pretty decent value um, I'm gonna turn those up I'm gonna turn the omnis completely off I'm going to turn this mic off, and I'm going to turn the cardioid mics up. Now, if you notice, these mics have much less of a fullness to their sound than the omnidirectional mics do. But the benefit to cardioid mics is that since they have a directional pickup pattern, you can move them around and pick up different sections or different... What am I trying to say? Different areas of the whole surrounding soundscape Whereas since the omnidirectionals pick up sound from all directions, you're going to get all the sound coming in from around you. Whereas the cardioid, you can fine-tune it and sort of pick and choose what you want. So I'm going to move them around and you can hear how they'll pick up different sections of the soundscape around me as I rotate them. 
So take a listen with them pointed like this. I'll give you a second there. And then I'll flip them around. Right away, you can hear the traffic. It's a different soundscape. So that's the benefit to these cardioids. Take a listen. So there you have it folks. Those are the two different field recording mic options that I have available to show you today. I'm going to turn the Omnis back up because I kind of prefer those personally. They're so wide and full. So one thing I forgot to mention in my original take when talking about external microphones is wind protection. Wind protection is key and for high quality wind protection you're gonna pay for it between at least a hundred dollars per mic. Below that you get the little cheap foam things. Not all that great. I'll show you. This cardioid is unprotected. I'll give a little blow into it. This one is protected. A little better, but not really. Now, for my Omni mics, I, I have two-part system in here. Within this gray foam thing, within the gray fur, is actually, if I can pull it out, a little foam screen. This is a little more expensive, especially because the, the this windshield is Rycote brand, name brand, high quality, you pay for it. I'll show you the difference of wind in the Omni mics, protected versus unprotected. Unprotected first. Protected. A little bit better there, but I do have some higher quality wind protection. Now, if you wanted to go full out and get proper wind protection, such as the Rycote BBG, which is a little ball that goes over the capsule of the mic, you're going to pay for it. It'll be $150 just for the little ball per mic and then an extra $80 for the little windscreen to go on top of it per mic. So that brings you a total of 460 for two mics if I'm doing my math correctly. $460 just for wind protection. So to go back to my big point here, if you're just starting out, keep it simple. Recorder with built-in mics, one device, one windshield, one pair of headphones, throw it in your pocket and get out there. Don't futz around with all this stuff at first. I, I, sometimes, I don't even find it inspiring sometimes to bring this out because it's just a lot of stuff to set up. Keep it simple. Keep it classy. That's the basic, basic field recording. Um, again. 
super budget friendly. I think this Tascam recorder, I, I got it new for about 200 bucks. Um, and I'm not sure exactly on the pricing um, of the, the Zoom H1 is like the most budget friendly. It's probably less than a hundred bucks. Uh, the beauty, I, I, so I guess here, uh, the, the beauty for me for field recording is the exploration aspect. I, I, it's the same kind of thing with photography. It's a good reason to get out there and perceive things differently than you normally would just by say taking a hike when you're opening your ears and thinking wow that's interesting how can i use this sound or not even using the sound just how can i capture this that's a cool bird i've never heard that before i want to try to capture that and the beauty with having simple 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 pull it out of your pocket hit record it's going it probably took me 30 minutes to set up all my stuff here mic stands cables battery system keep it simple grow from there um i think that's about all i i wanted to cover in this video uh if you have any specific questions please please put something down in the comments i love to answer it i love to talk about it I, this, I glossed over a whole lot of stuff in this video. I just wanted to kind of give a basic introductory video to the whole practice of field recording. And so please drop a comment. If you're curious about something, hey, what type of mic is that? Hey, what, what type of bag is that? What, you know, where do you like to go? How do you do it in rainy weather? Blah, blah, blah. So I hope to see you soon. I hope I'll upload a new video soon. The plan is to do it every week. We'll see. You know how life goes. Thank you for sticking around. Peace out.